and you said before the election no plans to raise taxes or the pre-em did beyond the eight billion that you had earmarked so a lot of people out there are going to be quite shocked today if you think Keir Starmer is the only Labour Party leader who avoids tough questions think again Treasury Minister Rachel Reeves recently faced a live interview and the results were nothing short of shocking her performance was called into question with some saying she couldn't fully address critical issues and even seemed to backtrack on previous statements let's dive into this in-depth critique and uncover the most pressing political developments from across the country before we get started make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on major political updates well in the decisions that we've made in you the budget that, today I accept that this is a, a big and a substantial uh, budget. But it that wasn't the budget might feel that I was. Down, it wasn't the budget. Straight with them. It wasn't the budget that I was expecting to deliver when I became Chancellor on the 5th of July. I didn't think that any government would be so reckless to have £22 billion pounds of unfunded commitments. Are you honestly saying that you have a democratic mandate for the measures that you have announced today? Tens of billions of pounds in increased spending and tens of billions of pounds of tax rises, none of which is in this document. You have a democratic mandate for this. The first line of the first step in our manifesto was to return stability to our economy. That is the most important thing that There's I have to do as Chancellor. And we do have a mandate There's for bringing that stability back to the economy. You're asking the public for 40 billion tax rises. Can you at least reassure people there are no more tax rises after this? Well, I've committed to just have one budget a year. I'm not coming back to this no, in this the spring. Parliament. No, this Parliament. I'm not going to make uh, commitments to never uh, change taxes again. That would be irresponsible. In the latest twist in British politics, the Labour Party's handling of major budgetary decisions has come under intense scrutiny, with Treasury Minister Rachel Reeves' recent interview setting off a media firestorm. Reeves' performance on live television has sparked a heated discussion across the country, particularly due to accusations of inconsistencies and contradictions that left her visibly struggling to defend her budgetary choices. Let's dive into the critique surrounding this interview, examining how the Labour Party has faced criticism over its economic promises and public trust. The setting for this controversy began with Labour's new budget proposal, a record tax increase not seen since 1993. Reeves found herself in the hot seat as the interviewer reminded her of Labour's campaign campaign pledge to avoid tax hikes beyond the previously announced £8 billion plan. Yet, the latest budget defied these expectations with significant increases, which have left voters questioning the Labour Party's commitment to fiscal transparency. What led to this seismic shift in policy? According to Reeves, this was not the budget I expected to deliver when I became Chancellor on the 5th of July. As Reeves struggled to explain the sudden jump to a tax-laden budget, she attributed part of the fiscal strain to previous government mismanagement, a claim that only partly resonated with the British public. Reeves noted, the previous government did not set affordability criteria for pay review bodies on defense and education, which placed labor in a challenging financial position. Despite this defense, the unexpected tax hikes to cover these gaps have raised questions. The public is left to wonder, why wasn't this fiscal reality anticipated during Labour's campaign? The cornerstone of Labour's campaign centered on returning stability to the economy, a point that Reeves reasserted. However, this stability came with a hefty price tag, one that is starting to look like a betrayal to voters. With spending surging to cover public sector pay settlements and NHS funding, Labour's fiscal strategy has left the public skeptical about the effectiveness of these new policies. Adding fuel to the fire, the government had previously been critical of the Conservative administration's elevated tax burden, reaching a 70-year high. This budget proposal, which further raises taxes, contradicts Labour's criticism of its predecessors. We asked the wealthiest in our society and businesses to pay a bit more, Reeves said, attempting to frame the tax hikes as a targeted approach. However, her reassurance has done little to quell the sentiment that Labour has broken its promise to working people. Indeed, Labour's manifesto explicitly pledged not to increase taxes on working people. Yet, as the interviewer pointed out, increased taxes on national insurance, income tax and VAT have raised red flags. The contradictions within the budget and Labour's manifesto commitments have stirred frustration as working people find themselves shouldering part of the burden despite Labour's vow to safeguard their interests. Furthermore, Reeves emphasized that the government will improve public services, contrasting this commitment with the Conservative Party's alleged neglect. 
However, as the public observes the Labour Party breaking tax-related promises, a growing sentiment of distrust emerges. Many wonder if Labour's tax policy will genuinely improve public services, or if it simply amounts to another broken campaign promise. Adding another layer to Labour's rocky week, Defence Minister John Healy faced backlash for his apparent inconsistency with a powerful symbol, the red poppy. In the lead-up to Remembrance Day, Healy publicly encouraged citizens to wear the poppy as a mark of respect for the armed forces. Yet the following day, as he arrived at Downing Street for the cabinet meeting, the symbol was conspicuously absent from his coat. For many, this slip seemed minor. However, Healy's role as defense minister amplifies the importance of such gestures, and the public has not taken kindly to the lapse. The poppy is a deeply symbolic emblem in the UK, honoring those who sacrificed their lives in wartime. Healy's inconsistency, whether accidental or due to an unavoidable coat change, has left some questioning his sincerity in supporting the remembrance initiative he promoted just hours prior. This incident stirs concern not only about optics, but also about the authenticity of Healy's leadership. His office issued a statement suggesting the coat switch had been unavoidable, but the response has failed to quiet critics. The incident seems particularly out of touch given Healy's recent appearances at events honoring veterans, where he visibly displayed his support by wearing the poppy and commending the armed forces. Adding another layer to Labour's rocky week, Defence Minister John Healy faced backlash for his apparent inconsistency with a powerful symbol, the red poppy. In the lead-up to Remembrance Day, Healy publicly encouraged citizens to wear the poppy as a mark of respect for the armed forces. Yet the following day, as he arrived at Downing Street for the cabinet meeting, the symbol was conspicuously absent from his coat. For many, this slip seemed minor. However, Healy's role as defense minister amplifies the importance of such gestures, and the public has not taken kindly to the lapse. The poppy is a deeply symbolic emblem in the UK, honoring those who sacrificed their lives in wartime. Healy's inconsistency, whether accidental or due to an unavoidable coat change, has left some questioning his sincerity in supporting the remembrance initiative he promoted just hours prior. This incident stirs concern not only about optics, but also about the authenticity of Healy's leadership. His office issued a statement suggesting the coat switch had been unavoidable, but the response has failed to quiet critics. The incident seems particularly out of touch given Healy's recent appearances at events honoring veterans, where he visibly displayed his support by wearing the poppy and commending the armed forces. Just a week ago, Healy's public engagements projected a committed advocate for the military and its legacy. In photos captured at Trinity House in London, he was seen smiling broadly with veterans, promoting a defense agreement with Germany, and visiting Richmond-upon-Thames to support remembrance efforts. However, the moment he arrived at Downing Street without a poppy created an unintended dissonance between his words and actions. This misstep, though small, appears significant given the broader public's expectations for a defense minister during a period of national remembrance. Healy's perceived carelessness has left a portion of the public feeling that he doesn't fully appreciate the gravity of his role. The controversy raises a deeper question about whether Healy's loyalty to his own message is as unwavering as he claims, and whether Labour's leaders are effectively demonstrating the values they urge the public to uphold. The scandals surrounding Rachel Reeves' economic strategy and John Healy's symbolic misstep have coalesced into a growing wave of public disillusionment. Many voters, especially those who rallied behind Labour's promises of change and stability, feel that the party has already started to waver in its commitments. The mixed messaging over Labour's fiscal policy has reignited concerns about transparency. For many, Reeves's live interview marked a critical juncture in their view of the Labour Party's approach. Despite the economic challenges left by the previous administration, Labour's campaign suggested that they would provide clearer, more stable financial governance. The disconnect between these promises and the new reality leaves voters questioning how much the party knew before the election and why they weren't more upfront. Moreover, the symbolism of Healy's poppy incident extends beyond the mere act of wearing a flower. For some, the symbolism of Healy's Labour's poppy potential. incident to overlook core values for which it claims to stand. The red poppy symbolizes national pride and respect for military history. As the public witnessed Healy's minor but telling oversight, it prompted a reassessment of his leadership style and the level of dedication Labour's ministers truly have to the values they publicly champion. These recent events underscore the steep path Labour faces in regaining public trust. For Reeves and Healy, the stakes are particularly high. Reeves's budgetary backpedaling and Healy's symbolic misstep together send a message that goes beyond simple policy decisions. Voters interpret 
interpret these as signs of potential instability in labor's ability to execute its promises, an outcome that could reshape public opinion and weigh heavily on the party's reputation. Reeves must now demonstrate how the labor budget will genuinely strengthen the economy and improve public services without alienating the working class. To win back trust, she will need to communicate more transparently, addressing the root of the policy shifts and why labor's pledges couldn't be fully met. Additionally, by establishing a clear, actionable plan for managing public finances, Reeves can show the public that labor's commitment to stability is more than just a slogan. For Healy, the task is equally critical. In the wake of the poppy controversy, he faces pressure to demonstrate consistency and respect for symbolic national values. His role as defense minister is intrinsically linked to the morale and respect of military families and veterans across the country. Simple gestures, particularly at a time of remembrance, carry weight. By redoubling his efforts to visibly support the armed forces and the remembrance movement, Healy has a chance to reaffirm his commitment to the values he represents. Labor's leadership, particularly as the party steers its first budget in 14 years, must tread carefully. Inconsistencies, whether in policy or public image, pose a risk of undermining the credibility Labor has sought to build. With mounting public scrutiny, Labor's leadership must focus on clarity, honesty, and the ability to execute on its promises. As Labor's ministers grapple with the fallout of these incidents, the party's future rests on its ability to address voter concerns candidly. With its reputation on the line, Labor's next steps will be crucial for both maintaining public trust and reinforcing its commitment to the ideals on which it campaigned. As the country watches closely, Reeves and Healy's recent missteps offer a lesson in leadership and accountability. Labor's response to the public's concerns will reveal much about its approach to governance. Are Labor's leaders willing to own their mistakes, address public criticism, and provide the transparency that voters demand? Or will they continue to present contradictory narratives, further widening the gap between campaign promises and governmental reality? The public's response to these controversies highlights an underlying desire for leaders who not only articulate values but embody them, both in policy and in public conduct. As Labour looks to the future, one thing remains clear. The British people are watching, and they expect Labour to align its actions with the values it professes to uphold. In a landscape where public trust is hard won and easily lost, Labour's ability to navigate these challenges will determine its standing for years to come.